Broadcasting from the Unshackled Studios in Melbourne, this is Wilms Front, brought to you by theunshackled.net. Now here's Tim Wilms. Everyone who is not a, a deep, deep a deep state lackey knows that Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself. I mean, the, yes. the, yeah, the, the fact that he was supposedly on, um, yeah, he, he was meant to be on suicide watch, taken off suicide watch just before uh, he committed suicide. And of course, you sp there, in the cell that he was in, there's actually no, nothing to hang the sheets from. And you're given paper sheets in those correctional facilities. So you can't hang yourself from that. Uh, he is... Uh, uh, his cellmate was uh, taken away the night before. The guards were suddenly off uh, duty, and there was a, a camera malfunction. <laughs> malfunction. <laughs> <laughs> all no, all the cameras had a malfunction, and um, yeah, it was all of those things together. If it was one of those things, then you'd go, oh, maybe. But <laughs> those three things in conjunction, like that, doesn't look like a coincidence considering how high profile he was. I mean, yeah. I, the point is, all these memes are supposed to push it into the normie sphere. Like, people like you and I have been following this for some time, but now, like, regular people, like, one of, <laughs> just one of the guys I used to play Xbox with, you know, he's sending me Epstein memes, and I'm like, wow, okay, cool. I remember after Epstein's, I think, it was, was it before or after he committed suicide? Uh, remember there was that huge raid, uh, Area 51, uh, viral Facebook uh, campaign, and most people believed that it was a Facebook algorithm trick to distract people from Epstein because it was such a. Why are we suddenly talking about Area Fifty One again? Yeah, mm. but uh, there is another uh, viral Facebook event which is happening uh, this Friday, the eighth of November, uh, which is uh, raid the the Clintons' estate. They can't suicide us all. <laughs> yeah, well, they probably can go after your family. Well, That's how these people work. Uh, Hillary and Chelsea Clinton have been on this book tour. They've, they've got some mother-daughter book, and uh, uh, they were on The Daily Show uh, with uh, Trevor Noah, who, I mean, John Stewart, he was... Totally it, manufactured. Yeah. Yeah, but John... Me, I'm yeah. a person. Yeah, but John Stewart, when he hosted that show, I mean, obviously he was a, a liberal, but, like, his satire was... Like, like, there was a lot of legitimacy behind it, where Trevor Noah's just like, oh, America's so bad, and Trump's so bad, and you sort of think, with these Trevor Noah and the other one, John Oliver, like, if you hate America so much, why did you come here to pursue a comedy career and host a national TV show? That's what, that's what I don't get. But she asked uh, Hillary Clinton, uh, how did you kill Jeffrey Epstein? And then, of course, the audience and Hillary are like, oh, I don't know why people come up with these crazy conspiracies. I mean, they harassed some, <laughs> some dear old friends of mine. Uh, one of them went up to one of my friends. I've known her since she was six years old. And my friend told her, look, I know Hillary. She's nothing like that. And the guy was like, but I saw it on the internet. <laughs> Just makes me think of the um, Tom Jones on the Simpsons episode where, where Smithers has the gun to his <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's it. Smile hmm. for the camera. <laughs> If you look at older footage of Hillary Clinton, she used to have this real folksy Arkansas, like really put on Southern accent. Oh yeah, have you have you seen when the light uh, falls down? Yes, the light falls down when it was when uh -huh. Bill and Hillary Clinton. Uh, that, it was after the first aff affair with Jennifer Flowers was revealed. They did a sit down to sort of explain the problems in their their marriages. And yeah, Hillary Clinton back then had a, a pretty full on Arkansas accent. And then of course the the light falls, and then uh, she's like Jesus, Mary and Joseph. And then this because uh, the the, six, the sixty minutes uh, guy when uh, that's another thing. Uh, I was watching uh, the sixty minutes deception the other night. How uh, 60 Minutes uh, basically uh, did a hatchet job on Christopher Ruddy, who was the main skeptic of Vince Foster, the, the Deputy White House Counsel's uh, suicide in, in 1994. But uh, going back to the, the light falling on the Clintons, the... There must have been some spirits in that room or something. Yes, follow yes. The, the, the interviewer said, oh, I realised that the lights had fallen down and almost killed them. And then you just, the YouTube comments are, are, are gold. They're basically like, oh, the light tried to save us. Uh, the light was found with uh, two bullets to the back of the head. 
Yeah. Mm. It's, yeah, we're still able to, like, that's the thing. We used to, like, laugh about this, like, when Epstein got arrested, mm, wonder how long until he'd be suicided, and then it came true, and you sort of think, you know this is a meme now, you know that if he commits suicide, there's going to be a lot of questions asked. This is the internet age, you can't... You, you, certain things break the algorithm. Yeah, um, and the whole process of the internet and culture, I've been doing some reading on, on that sort of, the idea of, and I've spoken about it in the past, where these old systems of control... Um, like when FM radio came out, RCA, um, who controlled all the AM networks, tried really, really hard to stop FM radio because it was a threat to their model. Fast forward to now, and you've got it, culture is is like a process of corporate corporate entities trying to say this is culture, and then people who are the actual creators of culture taking that and repurposing it and making it theirs. The memes are how we do that now. Um. But we got, because uh, uh, this, as it's termed meme warfare, it, it did uh, seep through to, to the mainstream media because we had, it was uh, last, I think exactly one one week today, that uh, Fox and Friends, uh, they had famed uh, pathologist uh, Dr. Michael uh, Baden on now. He uh, had uh, probed other famous... Uh, deaths such as yeah, like John F. Kennedy, yeah, uh, Martin oh, was Luther he on King. the Kennedy one? Yes, he's about, he's about okay. 85 years old, and he said that in his 85 well, years of experience, run. he'd never seen a, a suicide like that where the bones had been so broken, and that it most definitely was associated with uh, strangulation in a homicide. And there was no, well, no DNA results have been released to to see uh, if someone else's DNA was on Epstein. And uh, yeah. also, um, on that, yeah, on that that video. So if you if you look in the comments and you look on uh, the TU page right now it's in the the front the story that i published today which was a rundown uh, called the three signs epstein story isn't going away we go into detail well not great detail but we share this is one of the one of the um things we share is this fox news uh clip of dr michael baden talking and he goes into detail he names the specific bones um on the upper neck which are you know fractured and there's also the uh, ligature he described it as, which was the um, the bed sheet or whatever. And he said that we well, they, we still don't know what DNA is on the uh, the bed sheet. Um, and <laughs> yeah, so the quote the quote that we've got here is the injuries that were sustained were unusual for suicidal hanging and more consistent with ligature homicidal strangulation. Um, and he. They asked him, you know, are you saying that you believe it wasn't suicide? And he said the evidence points towards homicide rather than suicide. But what's interesting about this and that I point out in the article is that I I really feel like this is probably damage control um, because they know – they've no doubt they've seen the memes. I mean, Hillary's even seen the bloody – on Trevor Noah, you know, they're joking about it. Um once they lose control of the narrative, they have to regain it. How do they do that? Okay, they go, okay, yeah, okay, maybe, maybe he didn't kill himself, but they redirect it in the wrong way. You know, maybe he didn't kill himself. Maybe he's living on some island somewhere. Maybe he's had facial reconstructive surgery. Maybe yes. he's living in Antarctica. Yeah, there, are, you know? there, are, there are three different uh, scenarios: is that he legitimately committed suicide, or uh, that he was murdered by, I. Obviously, like, everyone's mind went to the Clintons, but he had dirt on thousands and thousands of powerful people, and so the, the list of suspects is is endless, or he could have been... We discussed on an episode uh, two weeks, weeks ago that there was a former Israeli intelligence uh, official who said that uh, both uh, Jeffrey Epstein and his uh, Madame and procurer Gilsey Maxwell, who... Should be the world's most wanted woman. Where is she? Like, like, shouldn't she be on the top of the FBI's most uh, wanted list? She, 
The the burger photos where she was spotted outside a burger joint in LA, they've been revealed to be photoshopped. She was apparently spotted in Brazil uh, a couple of, of weeks ago, or she could be uh, dead as well. But yes, nobody's bothered to... Because if there's a high-profile missing person, they, they search the world for them. Yeah, or that high-profile missing person gets facial reconstructive surgery, a new identity, and then just pays off the local government of some tin pot dictatorship in South and Central America somewhere and lives out the rest of their days in peace. Mm. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know, I'm just spitballing here. But we had, uh, it's amazing that, because uh, uh, as uh, you mentioned in uh, your article last week, I had the uh, the Melbourne uh operators of uh, we are we are change uh, mm -hmm. <clears throat> uh jeff and uh jacqueline and uh, obviously that was started b way back in 2006 as a global organization by luke radowski and he got onto to epstein island uh with uh jeff uh, jeff berwick uh, who is the the dollar vigilante a crazy crypto anarchist uh, guy, and yeah, there was a lot of weird, like, it was sort of like they were exploring an Egyptian, uh, pyramid. Yeah, I mean, I, so I had a couple of different reactions when that video came out, because people had been talking about, there was a, there was another Facebook talking about, like, the Area 51 thing, there was one that was like, let's all raid Epstein Island, they can't suicide us all, or they can't shoot us all. Um, my reaction initially was, Oh, this is cool. This is just going to be able to confirm what we've already seen from aerial photographs, and like, there's already been some, you know. Um, but there was, you know, those doors. There was, like, those little. Um, I guess you'd call them maintenance um, storage areas, sort of in to the side of the mountain. You open it, and it's just like what two meters by three meters or something like that for storing equipment and probably massage chairs and whatever seems like the whole island is set up in such a way that when the VIPs arrive, the servants set it all up. And then when the VIPs leave, they pack it all away somewhere. Mm. So those Caribbean islands are known for having, you know, sea caves and tunnels and whatnot. And it's very, it's, it's pretty likely that there are, or at least were tunnels underneath Epstein Island. So the theory was that, um, that temple a weird ass temple where everything was just painted on um that that was that was kind of like an entryway to the tunnels and there was like you know sacrificial chambers underneath and whatever and apparently people in neighboring islands after the, the whole story sort of bust that there were there was explosions heard from the islands like they're all oh, better shut it down sorry for swearing um we better shut it down you know we've got to cover all the tunnels up um just like when all that stuff on pizzagate came through they did a whole bunch of renovations so it's like if you were running say a smuggling operation you had really illegal tunnels or whatever you would be monitoring the internet or whatever for the slightest hint that there's been a leak as soon as there's a leak concrete that all up get rid of it move it somewhere else um these people are good at what they do like you look at all of the the human trafficking um towns like hubs in the united states which consequently turn out to be the uh, the sanctuary cities um are hubs for human trafficking and because they're close to border towns well just look over the border in mexico for example i mean the the cartels basically have their own tunnel transporting uh system which well they've been in the news uh, because uh, one of the cartels has massacred nine american uh, mormons and and trump has offered to the the new president of mexico to to team up to fight the the drug cartels i think that would be because uh, they they managed the cartels to extract el chopo's son from from custody they get like defeating those those drug cartels in mexico that's tougher than isis i reckon yeah um they have the <laughs> You see some of the uh, jury rigged um, technicals that they've got. Like, they've built their own submarines, they built their own armored vehicles and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and they, they give the military a run for their money over there. So, they really are like, I wouldn't say harder, tougher than ISIS, but I'd say they're probably more experienced. They've been doing it for a while. 
But if that's and what they're, they're armed yeah. by the CIA, thanks to um, what was it, uh, Operation Fast and Furious? They, they oh yeah, those guns. Barack Obama <laughs> and uh, Eric Holder, the Attorney General. Well there. done. Imagine if uh, Trump uh, did that. Uh, that would be a double impeachment. Yeah, um, but nothing really came of it. Funny that. No, no, it just sort of disappeared. And when these operations don't work, they just sort of like pack up shop. Everybody sort of fades away. They set up their next agent. Like I mentioned in the article, like you remember Coney 2012? You remember how there was like that organic grassroots, um, what I describe as a CIA psyop <laughs> to uh, destabilize and drum up war in a Central African country that totally everybody just called it out. They were like this. It's, I remember watching the videos and being like, this is weird, man. This just doesn't feel right. It's too, like, everybody, yay, we can make a difference. We're, 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 we're the young people and we're changing the world. Let's get rid of this dictator and send people to die. Um, and then that guy had a mental breakdown and ended up, like, yeah, he was found, naked yeah, on a street yeah, corner. Yeah. They, yeah. they, they, they should have uh, maybe... In Coney 2012, super glued themselves to things. Maybe that would have kept it alive. Yeah, that, that would stop the uh, proliferation of child soldiers for sure. Mm. Now, 24 hours ago, uh, Project Veritas, which is run by, by James O'Keefe, uh, he promised a Jeffrey Epstein uh, bombshell, which uh, at the time you, ne you, you didn't know what he was going to. Uh, reveal and if it is a bombshell why are you promoting it 24 hours beforehand you've given the the powers that be 24 hours to, to put two bullets in the back of your head but yeah, be, yeah. it turned out to be a big nothing burger because it's basically a leaked tape of uh nbc oh sorry abc uh 2020 uh, host, uh, uh, Amy uh, Roback, how she was basically despairing that her bosses at ABC uh, killed the the story that she believes that uh, Jeffrey Epstein definitely didn't kill himself and that Gilsey Maxwell, you know, she's probably going to be killed. And this is what the, the statement that she put out in response to Project Veritas, Amy Roback's. As a journalist, as the Epstein story continued to unfold last summer, I was caught in a private moment of frustration. I was upset that an important interview I had conducted with Virginia Roberts, who was the main whistleblower uh, in the, the Epstein-Maxwell uh, pedophile ring, she's the one that, that sued Maxwell, uh, didn't air because we couldn't c obtain significant corroborating evidence to meet the ABC's editorial standards about her allegations, as if that's ever stopped the media before. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> my comments about because uh, this is the thing she said that the, they were threatened by the royal palace uh, ABC that they wouldn't uh, be able to interview uh, William and Kate the, the the royal royal couple. My comments about Prince Andrew and her allegations that she had seen Bill Clinton on Epstein's private island were in reference to what Virginia Roberts said in that interview in 2015. This is four years ago. I was referencing her allegations, not what ABC News had verified through our reporting. The interview itself, while I was disappointed it didn't air didn't meet our standards in the years since no one ever told me or the team to stop reporting on jeffrey epstein we've continued to aggressively oh, okay. pursue the important story and this is what abc released at the time not all of our reporting met our standards to wear but we never stopped <laughs> investigating the story ever since we've had a team of invest team on this investigation and substantial research just dedicated to it. That work has led to a two-hour documentary and six-part podcast that will air in the new year. I look forward to ABC airing that. Yes, I look forward to a heavily sanitized mainstream media account of mm. what we already know. But we know um, that, because uh, I remember it was some documentary about fake news, some New York Times guy saying, we have very strict editorial standards, yet uh, one week later they released a fresh uh, sexual assault allegation against uh, Brett Kavanaugh, which was apparently <laughs> witnessed by one of his friends, but they forgot to mention that the woman who he supposedly assaulted, she didn't remember a incident like that ever occurring but hey this is the the me too era if someone says they saw you doing some uh, assaulting somebody then there doesn't need to be an actual victim the allegation is itself must be believed believe women 
Yeah. Um, it's they really they they will not stop with Trump. Hey, it's been it's been a little bit. Um, like they just they move from one thing to another. They're like, oh, that didn't work. Oh, we need a new thing. Mm. Like if people can't see through, see the media in the states for what it is in all of them being like united against bad orange man like yeah he's not perfect yeah he's um he's he's probably doing more for the benefit of israel than for the benefit of the united states but um the fact that they're just so vehemently against him all the time and it's one thing to the other you know they don't talk about um hillary clinton selling uranium to the russians they don't talk about that <laughs> Um, well, yeah, or they and they also say that oh, the the quid uh, pro quo between uh, uh, Joe Biden and the Ukrainian government saying that if you don't fire the prosecutor, you're not getting the the five hundred million. But son of a bitch, he got uh, fired, uh, which was the prosecutor investigating his son uh, Hunter Biden. Apparently, the CNN tells oh, it's being debunked that there was any uh, corruption there, and of course there is the China. Uh, trip as well, where uh, Hunter Biden went with his father on Air Force Two to China, and while his father was on official state visit, uh, he and it's John Kerry's stepson were able to raise uh, 1.5 billion dollars, some obscene amount of money for China to invest in the United States. What a coincidence! Uh, but uh, there's nothing to see here. It's all about uh, what uh, Trump might have uh, subliminally, subconsciously meant when he was talking to the Ukrainian president. Yeah, it's um, both sides of politics. Uh, you can even see it in Australia, and I'll get to that in a second. They're both playing um, the field. They're both trying to solicit donations from foreign entities to you know that it's a matter of like um, well these are not donations it's pretty much uh a a son of a vice president benefiting over his father's position position yeah, yeah. and which uh, trump I mean, that's uh, politics though yeah. isn't it like let's yeah. be real here <laughs> well how how it's traditionally uh, been done until basically that's the well, reality of the 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 freedom of the the internet uh, basically exposed that uh, politicians all of their all of their secrets that they and the political media uh, complex had been hiding they eventually pop out and like this is the thing uh, politicians can't deny that something happened like say they like, ten years ago because there's now a digital trail yeah. And so the new thing is basically, oh, the camera misheard me. <laughs> well, it just reminds me of um, years ago after 9-11, there was all these, uh, and I'm going to say that I haven't personally done the research on this, but there was allegations that um, Dick Cheney was personally profiting from the war in Afghanistan and Iraq because of shares that he held in, uh, I think he had like the majority of shares of Something really specific, like Aniseed? Uh, he was... I, I know that before he became vice president, he was chairman of Halliburton, which was a defense contractor. Yeah. yeah, so, I mean, there's... There's there's all these, like, oh, yeah, we can't have... We have to have uh, transparency. We can't have competing interests. But when you've got... Let's be real, like, the majority of people who are, have a net worth above, like, a million dollars, they have their extra worth stilled overseas hmm. on offshore accounts so who's what's stopping them from uh then laundering that money and then uh using patsies to then invest that money into say you know stock in things that they have control over insider trading basically well trump's lost money as as president and so or oh, have his have his children as well, and he doesn't take a salary as as president. He he gives it away. We know that that's definitely taken place because there's been the the. It's not a novelty check. He actually gives the check over to his paycheck to 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 the uh, charity or a government organization that he that he wants to 
he, he wants to donate it to, but yeah, his, his wealth has taken, well, he, well, some people believe he's basically being ran out of uh, New York now because he's no longer a, uh, a resident of, uh, New York state. He's now, uh, uh, resides in in Florida, Mar-a-Lago. His uh, Palm Beach uh, resort is is now listed as his primary residence. So he'll be on the ballot in twenty twenty as a candidate from Florida. Yeah, right. Mm. Yeah. And uh, as Florida, the congressional uh, races there uh, uh, are quite interesting uh, because uh, you have Laura Luma, she's running for uh, Congress in Florida, and uh, Enrique Terrio, the uh, chairman of the Proud Boys, he's also running for, for Congress as well. It's like, you, you banned us from social media, but hey, you can't stop us filing uh, a... <laughs> uh, paperwork to, to run for elected office yeah and then they've got what whatever their equivalent of parliamentary privilege is i don't know how it works in the the, the united states but um i mean <laughs> florida man runs for senate or oh, they, 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 they called it, uh, this is how objective the, the local uh, Florida press is. One of, I can't remember the name, but their, their headline was uh, local douchebag runs for uh, co uh, Congress. That's quite it's, objective. It's, it's very in-depth in um, South Park tier political analysis. Uh, like, eh, douchebag or a turd sandwich? I'm woke, everybody. Hmm. I'm not even uh, the most left-wing media outlet. <laughs> called Fraser Anning something like that and of course he was the the pariah of Australia's parliament uh, for uh, the first half of this year. Yeah it was so stunning and brave to see all of the uh, left-wing journalists patting each other on the back for who could come up with the most creative um, comment or label for Fraser Anning. Yeah um but I mean, it just makes them come out of the woodwork. We need we need another uh, situation like Anning to, you know, so, something to shake things up a little bit. Mm. Now, with what we're going to get into next, it's as uh, with uh, Nick Fenters and the the Groper Army. It's an example of a a internet movement morphing into real life, which basically what you want. I just want to finish our, our Epstein segment by this is the Epstein meme bursting into the mainstream media. This is uh, because uh, the on, I think it was the, uh, uh, the five, uh, they were, they were interviewing a, a breeder of the, the Belgian, uh, Malinos, uh, which is the, the dog, uh, the breed of the dog Conan that that helped kill uh, the the ISIS leader Abdu Bakir uh, Al Badi. Show uh, the clip, aren't you? Yeah, Jesse Waters was was Ooh. interviewing him. Yeah, show the clip. And he can't wait. So thank you and thank Nero for your service. I appreciate it. Absolutely. If, if I could, could I throw a PSA out real quick? Real quick. Uh, just the the remarkable nature of these dogs and, and them being highlighted in the news creates a, a huge demand by people that, that frankly shouldn't have them. If uh, if you see the the coverage and you decide I want one of these dogs, either buy a finished trained, uh, you know, fully trained and, and finished dog from a professional, uh, or just just don't get one at all. Um, and Epstein didn't kill himself. <laughs> okay, thank you for that commentary. All right, Mike. Maybe more on that later. Oh, shit! I think Jesse Waters, he handled that well. It's like, well, we might be talking about that later. <laughs> or but I if, might end up with two bullets in the back of my head later. If, 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 if that happened on CNN, then there'd be like a massive, I think maybe Don Lemon's or Chris Cuomo's heads uh, would explode. Thanks for tuning in to Wilmsfront. Visit timwilms.com or Rational Rise TV to view the archive of episodes. And keep visiting theunshackled.net to view all our shows. And to keep up with the latest real news and analysis.